Okay, so here is my brief review on the Brother Hobby 1806 2850 KV motors. Uh, let me go ahead and run through how I have them set up. Uh, I'm running them on HQ5043 tri blades, uh, an X Hover Win 5 frame, and the rest of the components I will list in the description, but that's the basics of it. And uh, if you want to learn more about my build, you can look in the description and I'll have all links to everything that I use, of course. Okay, so I'm going to break this review up into three parts. I'm going to talk about overall thrust and what I think is the best performing factor about these motors. Um, I'm going to talk then about efficiency, and then we'll go into durability, and then just some final thoughts and pros and cons, whatever. So as far as thrust goes, uh, the only motor I've ever flown that's similar to this size is like an old Emax 2204-2300. So I really have nothing to compare these motors to. So when I first picked these motors up, it was completely because I wanted to have an ultralight 5 inch build. This build is 225 grams and I figured well a 20 gram motor such as this with the prop nut and the full length of wire would go really well on it. So I figured okay high thrust to weight ratio but because it's an 1806 I might be lacking in thrust. Well I'll tell you guys from flying this around on a track that I've been using for about two weeks now. Um, it flies very well and it definitely has a lot of thrust. Uh, if you're looking at this motor thinking that it's an 1806 and it's not going to produce the thrust that you need, uh, I wouldn't worry about it one bit. It is a high KV, it's 2850 KV, and I definitely think that's where they make up for the smaller stator and everything of the 1806. Uh, it does have a good bit of power. In my opinion, it has a better thrust to weight ratio than my normal racer, which is an X Hover R5LX on Emax uh, 2306 2400 KV motors. Um, I do feel like this is a little bit more punchy, but I'm also running this all up weight with a 1300 graphene from Venom is like 400 grams and my other one's like 480 grams with a 1500. So there's definitely a big weight difference between the two and I think that's why this setup seems to feel more punchy and powerful in the air than my other setup does. But to the thrust itself with this particular motor, I think it has a good bit of thrust. I don't have exact thrust data and I don't know of anyone who does. But my guess is this motor is probably producing anywhere from 800 grams on the low end with an HQ5043 tri-blade to probably on the very top end 1,000 to 1,100 grams of thrust. I'm really just throwing numbers out there based on what I've flown in the past. Uh, the closest setup to this that I have flown overall would be it was an old QAV210 on Schizo Motors and I believe that setup weighed around 260-270 grams and uh, it produced around 1000 grams of thrust on the old uh, HQ uh, tri-blade and uh, this feels similar to that as far as uh, thrust goes but I really don't want to say that it's similar as far as the motor because this is a completely different motor than that. Where it feels similar is in the thrust to weight ratio. This quad feels very snappy on this motor and I think that's where this motor really shines. If your builds are below 240 grams, you're trying to build something ultra light, I think this motor is going to be perfect. So as far as thrust goes, definitely an A plus for that. Um, but again, it all comes down to how to build your quad. If I was to put these motors on a heavy quad such as this R5LX, which it's not really heavy, it's just it's a heavier setup, it probably won't fly as nearly as well because it's just not going to have the thrust to drive that frame. But as far as a lightweight frame goes, definitely enough thrust. So if you're buying this motor, you need to first off understand that you should be putting on an ultralight setup, not a heavier setup, which... And by ultralight, I mean anything below 250, 260 grams, probably max. And again, this is 225, so it's pretty light. Now, on efficiency with this, um, compared to my Emax 2306 2400 KV motors, which, in my opinion, are some of the most efficient motors for the thrust that you're getting on the market, I'm getting similar flight times, if not just a little bit more. And by flight times on the course that I'm flying, where I'm almost wide open on the throttle, I'm getting two minutes on that setup, and I'm getting two and a half minutes on this setup. So definitely a little bit more efficiency, a little bit more flight time with these motors, and um, that's just my personal take on them. So I think that if you're looking at them for efficiency and long flight times, um, they may be the motor for you, but again, it just it really depends on the type of flying you're doing. For racing, it's enough to complete a regional final course and get five laps in and come down with about 20 to 25% left on the battery, and I think that it'd be possible to get that sixth lap if, you really, if, if you're Ferrari's son or something like that. But anyway, so that's the efficiency, and as far as the durability is concerned, which is my third and final point, uh, durable motors, uh, only about 30 flights on them, but I've hit it quite a few gates now. I've actually slightly bent an arm but uh, I just need to fix that a little bit. That was full throttle into the gate, then into a ditch, and then onto some concrete. So 
uh, any frame would have definitely bent or broken from that. But even afterwards, it's still I'm still amazed at how well it flies. Uh, I think it has to do maybe with race flight or something, but there's zero shakes at full throttle, and the motor's slightly bent, so whatever. Uh, that's So as far as durability with the motors, though, great durability. Uh, I know people have been very skeptical about Brother Hobby motors in the past in terms of durability, but uh, I wouldn't worry about these. So overall thoughts, love the motors. Uh, if you're going to be buying them, put them on an ultra lightweight quad. Don't buy them because you're going to be getting crazy flight times or crazy thrust. That's not what these motors are for. But also put the right prop on it. I've tried different props from Cyclones to all the racecrafts to most of the HQs. I found that the 5043 Tri-Blade seems to have the best feeling in corners as well as thrust to efficiency. Where anything uh, bigger than that prop with the high KV that this sits at is just too much for the prop to handle and it starts getting really hot and it doesn't feel as good. So 5043 Tri-Blade is probably the way to go. The, um, the Dow 5050 Cyclone. Uh, the two-bladed version feels pretty good on it as well, but I do like the way that this tri-blade feels, and that's why I'm going to be using it in the future. Uh, as far as any cons with the motors go, um, you do have to remember that the bolt pattern is the smaller one, so you make, need to make sure you have a frame that is able to accommodate like the 1806 motors. Some of the new ones don't, so you need to make sure that uh, most of the ultralight frames do. So just double check that when you buy them. Uh, thank you so much for watching. That's my overall thoughts. They're $18.99, I believe, and you can get them at GetFPV. I'll have a link down in the description to where you can buy them. And I highly recommend you try them out. Um, if you've been flying floss motors, I personally haven't gotten to try them yet, so I can't say anything about the two. Um, but I will say that this is probably going to be the biggest competitor to that floss motor. So definitely give them a try if you're into ultralight builds. This is my first one, and it's definitely not going to be my last, and I can't wait to build more. So I tried to make this quick, but again, I'm hunting like seven minutes now, so I'm going to be quiet, put some flight footage for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.